All right, thank you, Brant. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, let me just share my screen here. All right, so <clears throat> I am more of the expert on the data capture side that creates the base map, um, an accurate base map, and that's what I'm going to go over today is the, the base maps that um, we create and how we deliver them uh, through Compass Track. So, Jen, I'll give a quick overview of Compass Data Compass Drone. Um, keep stuff brief here since we're over. Go over base map, base map basics, defining requirements, um, customer scenarios, like what happens when customers are sourcing base maps from us. Um, and then uh, capture platforms on how we go out and capture information that's used in the base maps and the feature creation and the example project at the end, just to give you an idea um, of what, what we've done. So, so I run the Compass Data Compass Drone side of the business. We're all about accuracy, um, doing a lot of survey around the globe in over 100 countries. And we're basically like the GI Joe or the Indiana Jones of um, geospatial on the Compass Data side. And then on the Compass Drone side, um, started that business in 2016. And we help folks uh, create drone programs with part 107 trainings, sell hardware, um, and also do services. So base map basics. Um, so a, a map layer really resides below the telematics um, and the information, the layers, the asset data is really used to help determine you know, where your resources are on a map and helps you um, quickly visualize the location of your information, right? So these base maps are tiled cached imagery and not imagery as in optical imagery, but imagery as in it's a raster data set um, that you take a snapshot of and then you tile them down based on uh, different zoom levels with different detail. And it's all done to uh, basically render really quickly so that it doesn't slow anything down on your on your telematics, your compass com uh, the tracking side. So the types of base maps, there's free streaming layers that are available that Mike showed. Um, and that's really what this image is right here. Um, there's commercial off the shelf data, which is, you know, it's either imagery um, or other vector data that's turned into uh, raster data that's available. There's um, integration of customer existing data, which I'll talk about more in detail. And then there's new custom data, right? Which is really what my expertise is in, is how to get new data and the detail that folks need on their base map. So important um, in any of these scenarios is defining the requirements for what the customer needs as a base map, right? So they're all different, but thinking about the size and the scale, right? Is it a country-wide base map that we're trying to produce or uh, provide to a customer? Is it a really small area, like a chemical plant, that um, you can go into much more detail on the assets of that environment and create more um, basically labeling and information that's important on that site? Um, and then there's detail on the completeness of the, you know, the assets, like is everything labeled? Um, but really safety is the key thing that comes up with all these um, and helps orient and visualize the asset in the space. Um, and with this information on the, you know, what the requirements are for a customer, um, it's key to, to, to have that. So, um, you know, there's things like security checkpoints, uh, material locations, hazardous areas, like is that needed or is that not? needed by customers so that we can do things like geofencing. Um, do the roads need to be labeled? Do the structures need to be identified and labeled both in imagery and in the vector data that turns into a raster? Um, and then the labeling of the zoom level, that's another important aspect of this, right? So as you go down into these different layers, um, we have to decide when we bring up that detailed information and at what zoom levels, it's all stuff that we work with the customers uh, to to figure out. So typical customer scenarios. Um, we sometimes we go to customers they have no data, right? And what's what's the use of telematics and uh, mobile resource management tracking information 
if it's on a blank screen, there's there's no real use for that, right? So um, there's scenarios where customers have to be offline, right? So they have no access to streaming data. Um, scenarios where customers have old and outdated data, um, where they have data but it lacks detail and they want um, higher higher fidelity, higher detailed data so they can understand more about the, the location of their assets. Um, and then there's also scenarios where customers have data but they have no access to it, like in large companies and organizations, maybe the IT or GIS department has this information, but the company's so large that they don't know how to work um, to figure that out and get that and get it integrated into our into our system. Um, or the customer has data, but it's not spatially or GIS ready. Maybe it's a PDF, right? There's a lot of valuable data that we see with our customers on the Compass Com side that's not GIS ready. And in those scenarios, we help out and digitize it, extract it and make it ready and put it into the basement. So um, on the custom base map capture side of things, right? So this is where somebody has no data or they have data, but it's outdated and they need more um, detail to the data. Um, th these are basically the platforms that we use to capture that data. So whether it be satellite, aerial imagery, um, just going and doing drone, LIDAR and imagery collections over smaller facilities, uh, mobile mapping, which I'll show an example of here in a minute, uh, traditional survey and sometimes underground utility mapping, right? So um, all these captures are done with these different platforms. And what we do here at Compass is we take the requirements of a customer, we look at the um, platforms that are most efficient to do that data acquisition. Um, and we use either a mixture or one or the other of these captures, uh, capture platforms. But typically they all have GPS and IMU, um, optical imagery and LIDAR, or at least GPS IMU or imagery or LIDAR, one of the things um, that we use for acquisition. So um, capturing the data is one thing, and then integrating it or extracting features is the next topic that I'll talk about here. So um, this is an example right here of an airport, but it could be anything, right? So we call this facility mapping database. Um, and basically what that is, is for this scenario right here is we have satellite imagery. And then what we do is we take that satellite imagery and then we digitize all the features within the imagery. And there's AI tools out there that are getting better and better on um, auto feature extraction, but still require some manual QC and editing, um, but then determining like what level of detail we need um, for a certain customer to extract that information. Um, and then you can see over here on the very right side, the number three, that's basically the output of the vector data um, that's extracted from the imagery. And all this is combined and layered and tiled and put into Compass Track, uh, Compass Comp software. And then you can decide which feature you wanna have and look at. And this over here on the right is another example. This is um, for uh, natural gas pipeline. Um, where we associate a lot of metadata and pictures and hyperlinks to um, the customers so that they can better understand their their assets, where they are, and then integrate it into Compass, Compass Track. Um, this here is another example. This one, we flew our aerial pod system, um, and then we also drove our mobile mapping system, and we integrated both. We extracted a, a very detailed map of a smaller area, which you can see here. Um, and basically with doing this in this way, um, we capture the imagery, survey ground control, uh, do the mobile mapping, process it, and all the data acquisition is pretty quick, um, very accurate. And then what we do is desktop mapping, right? So we sit, go capture it, come sit back at our desktop, and then we just start extracting things from it that turns into a base map that goes into Compass Com. And so he here's an example, um, which hopefully will highlight the importance of um, features in a base map, especially when you don't have many or you have none. Um, but this specific customer, they, they were funded for E911 mapping um, to get addresses so that 
um, E911 um, MSAG data sets can, people can route to locations where they get calls. Um, but they also had the roads and bridge department, street signs and cattle guards, um, had all these different departments kind of pulled money together to get a more feature rich asset data set. And we did it with our mobile mapper. So this is what the, the county looked like before. This is the data that they had, right? So it's just the major roads in a rural county. Um, and then after we went and did our mobile mapping, we got street center lines and filled out um, all this detail here. And then to go a little bit further, this is like the biggest town in this county, a smaller county. And this is the street center lines that we captured. And then as you, as I scroll through here, you'll see that there's more and more features Tensify that we extracted um, via the arranged photogrammetry from the mobile mapper and then also doing some extraction from the vehicle or from the aerial imagery as well. Um, so you can see that this data, you know, there's, there's a lot of information that uh, wasn't there previously. And then by doing this capture uh, with the mobile mapper and then processing and extracting it, we're able to get a lot more features on the base map that goes into Compass Com. And this is important because um, people need more accurate and more detailed maps to manage their assets within the city. This is that same location. And now you can see, you know, we extracted hyperlink photos of certain things like bridges. Um, we had metadata, ancillary data, like what, what kind of material the road is and bridges. Um, Here's an example of a sign and the, the feature asset um, photo that's associated with it. Um, these guys went culverts, so we include that as well. But as you can see, this is you know, much more detailed than they had before, and it's very useful for many reasons, um, and including integrating it with their mobile resource management solution from Compass Com. Um, so this example. Um, in this county, we, we mapped 1,500 miles of road and 6,000 features in a very rural location um, and brought a lot of value into uh, the, the management of all their assets for this county that they had not had previously before. So with that, um, that's my base map example. And thank you very much for your time, everyone. Thank you, Hayden. Um, I, I have a saying and my the folks here at the Compass have heard it many times, a good app, a, a good app with a great map can be a great app, a great app with a poor map, it's just a good map. So it's really about building that content in the background to support, um, the workflow that's going on top of it, whether it's your asset management system or your telematic system. And Compass Data has processes and, and acquisition ways to help you that. 